Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry for the delay in my like, sudden, I could say, disappearance or absence, but I've had quite a lot going on, and I weren't really particularly in the mood to record videos, and it's taken me a while just to do this one. So hopefully you enjoy, and hopefully it's up to a decent standard. I apologise if it's not. But welcome back, overall. And today we're going to be highlighting, which in my opinion should be classed as one of the most famous animals of our age, and this little animal is a dinosaur slash bird-like creature by the name of Archaeopteryx, meaning ancient wing. And this is a genus of bird-like dinosaurs that are actually in a transitional phase between non-avian feathered dinosaurs and birds. And it's also a very lovely image we have on the screen of it, although I've, this probably isn't the best like representation of what it actually would have looked like, but it's still a really cool image. There's a lovely little picture of a quite old, I was assuming, like, painting artist impression of Archaeopteryx in a Jurassic landscape. Archaeopteryx actually lived, did live during the late Jurassic period, some 150 million years ago, in what is now southern Germany. The larger specimens of Archaeopteryx only reached about the size of a modern day raven, which is a very cool animal indeed, being about half a metre or one foot, slight eight inches in length, so it weren't awfully large. Archaeopteryx actually only attained weight to about one kilogram or roughly two pounds, so overall it was not a large or hefty animal at all, even for the time. Archaeopteryx feathers were very similar to modern day birds, but they had more of a non avian like characteristic and actually appearance towards them. Archaeopteryx possessed more dinosaur characteristics than bird like features, such as small teeth and a long bony tail. Finally, going talking about dietary wise, Archaeopteryx was actually carnivorous and would have most likely hunted small an dinosaurs and animals at the time, which I'm sure it would have had more than a few me meals it would have been able to get during this period. It's got a lovely little image of a beautiful Archaeopteryx fossil. But in total though, 12 specimens of Archaeopteryx have been found, with all the fossils coming from a limestone deposit near South Holven, Germany. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. The famous London specimen though, was actually discovered in 1861 and described by paleontologist Sir Richard Owen in 1863. As Archaeopteryx macrua, I think it's macrua at least, Archaeopteryx confirmed Charles Darwin's theories and became a key piece of evidence for his origin of like the species, which showed a transitional fossil debate and confirmation of evolution. More or less, he's, he was talking, he needed a piece of evidence that actually showed the like half the like halfway point between evolution which was an animal like gradually turning or showing features from two like separate animal groups and Archaeopteryx proved that because it was a transitional animal between dinosaurs and birds because a lot of people even today will say that modern birds are actually dinosaurs which you can see in a way if you do want to have a look at a certain I'm going off topic here but if you do want to look at a lovely bird species that does look a hell of a lot like a dinosaur, I suggest you look at shoe bills, and especially baby shoe bills. Archaeopteryx was, I would say, a fairly large like winged dinosaur by their standards, because it wasn't a pterosaur, obviously. And he most likely, scientists reckon, glided from tree to tree, and used its wings mainly as a means to escape possible predation. Archaeopteryx, though, had a relatively slow growth rate, with it taken up to about 970 days to actually reach adult size of only one kilogram. Uh, this is quite unusual because it's not a large animal overall and it having a really slow growth rate can actually prove quite detrimental because obviously the larger you are the more, less chance of you being eaten I suppose. One species that a bird that actually lives today that exhibits, exhibits a very similar growth rate is a little bird known as the kiwi, which is a very cute flightless bird from New Zealand that has a very similar basal metabolic rate to Archaeopteryx as well. Here are just some fun feathery facts for you, love, love, my lovely ladies and gentlemen. I hope you indulge in them very much and find them very scrumptious, but let's move on to them. Anti-evolutionist Jonathan Andreas Ragnar wanted to change the name of Archaeopteryx to Gryphosaurus problematicus, the problematic griffin lizard. Like Ash Velociraptor, meaning swift thief, I think, lost off the top of my head, although I haven't done a video on them in ages. Archaeopteryx actually possessed like a sickle shaped killing claw on each of its feet to help dispatch prey, but whether this was actually used to disembowel a uh, possible prey is up for debate, because I don't think an animal such as Archaeopteryx would have been that capable of inflicting like enough force and like power to actually disembowel prey. There's still a debate that with Velociraptor and 
another such animal by the name of Deinonychus, which is practically the Velociraptors from Jurassic Park, if their actual sickle shaped claw was actually capable of disemboweling animals, because they more reckon it was just used for holding on to prey, such as large herbivores, because possibly like duck bill dinosaurs, such as hadrosaurs, and animals such as parasaur loafers and things like that, depending on what they were hunting and what time period. Here's a lovely little schematic or diagram of the skeletal structure of Archaeopteryx, but moving on, comparisons between modern birds and Archaeopteryx indicate that Archaeopteryx may have actually been diurnal, which is similar to most modern birds. The word diurnal actually just means that it's active during the daytime, it's like you got nocturnal, which means obviously it's active at night, and it's crispuscular, which is active between dawn and dusk, I think it's either dark, it's one or the other. I might need to research that though. This was actually done by examining things known as, I think it's the skeletic or skeroch, yes, skeletic rings, which are rings of bone found in the eyes of groups of vertebrate animals, and is often believed to serve the function of providing support for the eye. Modern paleontology often classes Archaeopteryx as the most primitive bird, but it's not actually the true ancestor of like most uh, prim of like when it comes to like transitional dinosaurs and birds. It's actually just a close relative of a certain particular animal. It's actually believed that a certain animal by the name of A.V. Minus was the closest ancestor to birds of in uh, that period, or like that, that like, uh, fine energy or paleontology -like section, or classification would be a better word, I'm not really with it today. But moving on, the actual name A.V. Minus, quite fittingly, actually means bird mimic. You also have Galli Minus, that means chicken, chicken mimic, and it's also quite a cool animal itself. Here is what I personally think is a gorgeous image of our lovely Archaeopteryx, apologise for that, with some delightful plumage, and speaking of plumage, Archaeopteryx specimens are actually noted for how well developed their flight feathers are. Through the use of electro electron microscopy and energy dispersive x-ray analysis, scientists were actually able to detect the structure of the melanosomes in a single feathered specimen, described in 1861 and believed that the actual colour of the feathers and general plumage would have been black. Which is, this image sort of represents it, but this, uh, this animal bird does look rather fabulous, and I don't think it would have been quite as flamboyant as this in reality. thought I would finish off with this lovely image, which I actually believe is quite good representation of what Archaeopteryx most likely would have looked like, especially with the colouration of the feathers, because they, scientists actually do estimate that they, they, most of the feathers would have been a white and black like, pattern. This was an extremely important animal species in terms of discovery and evolution in relation to the legendary Charles Darwin, which I'm a big fan of, and his theory of origin of the species. Although, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the video. I apologise for my voice, and I, I might sound a bit monotone, but I've not really been in the mood recently to make many videos, but I'm glad I actually have managed to finish this one. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video, and feel free to comment, like and subscribe, and join the Raptor Pack today by subscribing. Goodbye for now, and have a pleasant day.